by Peo Heddin, Head of Sales for Sensor Detect. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as we mentioned, my name is Peo Heddin, uh, representing Sensor Detect. Uh, we are a company that have been uh, around for quite some time. Uh, as a matter of fact, the research is based on 30 years of research. Uh, it's from the uh, Department of uh, Neuroscience in um, with Lund University. Uh, our founding father is uh, Søren Nilsen, uh, assistant professor at that time. Um, <clears throat> we are, uh, as a company, we were founded in 2005 and uh, we were public noted in Spotlight Market in 2009. So uh, what is it we actually do? Uh, well, as I've uh, mentioned previously in neuroscience, but we are a tool to uh, objective diagnosis for mental illness or mental disorder. Uh, we have done studies uh, that I will go through a little bit briefly shortly uh, in, in uh, pharmaceuticals as well. And, but we are focusing on ADHD, autism, schizophrenia and actually dementia, which is not mentioned in the slide here. So before I go into what actually the services that we can uh, offer to the market, uh, I'll go through a little bit on the scale of the issue. So according to WHO, uh, around 450 million people uh, already today around the globe suffer from a mental or neurological disorder. Most of them live in North America, but uh, are very closely followed by Western Europe, Africa and the Middle East. It is also uh, estimated that the market or the, actually the costs for society as such will be up to a whopping 16 trillion by 2030. Uh, and as you can imagine with the growing population this will grow and it will actually affect one in four at any one point in their life. No company in the world, and if anybody claims that, uh, I would uh, reject it directly. But we cannot actually address all the mental illnesses and disorders in the world with our tool. Uh, but we can address the focused ones that we have selected, which are ADHD, uh, autism, uh, schizophrenia and dementia. Uh, to enter the market properly and in a controlled manner, we have chosen ADHD to be our uh, primary focus. That, simply put, is because uh, it affects uh, around 390 million people around the world. That is about 5 to 7 percent of the children and adolescents and about 2 to 5 percent of the adults. Uh, it's a picture, uh, I hope you can see it. It's uh, our founder father, Sir Nilsen. He was not only a psychiatrist and, and a um, professor, but um, he also is a musician. So uh, he was um, <clears throat> looking into uh, meeting patients with schizophrenia and, and uh, he discovered that there is a correlation between uh, auditory response in his patients They're playing different sounds. So he got curious about that, that was about 30 years ago. And uh, <clears throat> so he started uh, mapping out what the, the responses in the brain are to different types of sounds. And I will go through that briefly also in the coming slide. There are, however, a lot of uh, stigma around the world when it comes to mental illnesses. Uh, we as a company do not uh, offer a solution to that stigma. Uh, however, we help to educate a bit around it to enter the market, of course. Uh, but we can help a lot with the availability. So there is a problem today that the measurements that are done or the diagnosis that are done are very subjective. We offer a service where you can objectively diagnose uh, a mental disorder. So it is not we who set the diagnosis, but we help the psychiatrists and the mental health care workers to set that diagnosis. Um, so uh, the solution, the technology as such, uh, so you can see on the left side of the presentation you see uh, ear, that is what we actually start with. We, the patient gets a headset, uh, electrodes connected to five points, 
and then we can start playing a sound and simply put it is a bit more complicated but simply put it is sounds sounding like or different intervals then we measure the brain stem's uh, response uh, from the medulla points inferior calculus to thalamus and cortex all the way that takes about 15 milliseconds and then we measure the peaks and the left and right asymmetries uh, we also measure habitation measures that is so if you uh, hear a sound uh, very loud you will react but then you will <clears throat> be comfortable with that sound afterwards when it comes to for instance a patient with schizophrenia or ADHD you will get alarmed and then continuously alarmed because you have a, a high alert on those so we measure the curves and we uh, uh, compare them with reference subjects. Market. Um, I'm a very positive person, uh, but if you do this, they do the calculations. So a number of uh, people in the world are about 7.8 billion people right now. Uh, and if you take the general assumption of what the research has shown, about 5% of the total population around the globe have ADHD. The potential customers only for ADHD, not a, uh, autism, schizophrenia and dementia, you'd get around 390 million potential customers uh, looking into a potential average sale of 75 euro. You'd have an enormous number. That is why I said the very positive number. Uh, but how uh, no matter how you kind of like twist and turn this, uh, you would still have a very large number uh, and the market value or the market potential of our service. So in this example, 1% would mean around 300 million euros. So how... How will we offer this service to our customers? We will offer it through uh, a pay-per-use service. So you actually don't pay anything for the measurement device, but you pay per measurement that you do. I just got a sign that I have a little bit low on time, so I'll speed up a bit. Um, uh, we will have a break even around 2022, and Q2, I would say around. Uh, we will have some investment costs, of course, entering markets such as regulatory and legal. Uh, we'll also have the marketing campaigns and we'll have to adjust the pricing and uh, do campaigns on the price as well. But as you can see, if we enter the markets in, uh, that we are in right now, we're in India, Bolivia, China, South Korea and Nordics. And we expect to have soon Saudi, Egypt, UAE and France and in 2022 we're targeting to start to work in the markets of England, USA and Japan. I will just say briefly in this slide as I have little time left I would say that the, we're just India we just signed a distribution agreement last week and the reason why we want to go into India is of course that it's in a huge market that's 1.4 billion people uh, of course, the, the government has realized that it needs a new healthcare plan. So they're spending a lot of money and resources to educate and to uh, put in policy support to make it easy to enter the market. Uh, in all the markets, and as you can see in this slide, uh, we are, have secured our patents. So we have global patents and that also in, is in India, of course. In India, we will have... Uh, every, uh, it will class as a class A device, which is uh, class one uh, as a reference in MDD and MDR. So uh, no, uh, no company can be founded uh, and say that they are an R&D company unless they do uh, a substantial amount of studies. Uh, this is an example of the study we did in Uppsala University where we could uh, see that we, have, uh, we could discriminate with schizophrenia and ADHD versus healthy controls with 91.4% uh, uh, specificity and 87.5% sensitivity, which is significantly better than any other measurement method, method to set the uh, diagnosis of 
mental illness. As I said, patents, uh, yes, we cover them all uh, in all different uh, parts of markets in the in global. Um, <clears throat> we have uh, one that patent that covers the technology as such. Uh, then we have a patent that controls the software and the clicking sounds and how you... And then we have the last one which actually covers the analysis of that uh, response on the brain brainstem response. I would also like to mention quickly that <clears throat> brainstem uh, is uh, involuntary. So when I say objective, the reason why I say that is that you can actually take this test while you're asleep because you cannot control this reaction at any point of time. In summary, uh, there is a global Global, the scale of the issue is huge and is growing with the population. There's become a um, significant attention on uh, mental illness and disorders uh, all around the world, uh, especially now when we have COVID and people have a lot of more time to think and, and react to things. Uh, it has an, a huge effect on society, meaning that with our service offering a service that could help to set diagnosis at a faster time, and a correct one with the uh, uh, non-subjective measures. Uh, we can help the mental healthcare workers and the psychiatrists to, to set that at uh, the fastest pace and to compare between different cultures and region, regions. Um, you can see the black dots here. Once again, just uh, repeating, uh, we are in Bolivia right now, uh, negotiating with Saudi Arabia, Egypt and UAE, uh, Sweden, South Korea, uh, India, and then we are also doing a push in China right now. In that, but that's in the early stages. Uh, before I end, of course, uh, we have a stock option, stock option program that ends on the 11th of December, which I think you should look into. It's uh, um, without promising too much. Uh, it's a very, very high potential and a low price compared to what you would get in the coming years. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's uh, no doubt a very interesting product and you talked a little bit about your studies here. And if we look then at the competitive landscape, first of all, is there a comp competitive landscape? Is there anything else like this out there? Uh, no, there is no such thing as an objective uh, diagnosis or help to set the diagnosis, I would say. Uh, there are, however, subjective ones, of course. You have the psychiatrists, uh, which uh, we will still need their long experience and know-how in, in talking to patients, of course. Uh, and then there are forms <clears throat> and, uh, and different methods to do this. Uh, there are also subjective uh, tools out there for eye tracking and, and then movement of face tracking, for instance. So the idea is that this would be used as a complement to a psychiatrist's evaluation then in yes. hospitals? Or, yeah. Yes. So it, it's not a replacement for it because we believe that uh, the psychiatrists and mental health care have a lot of uh, experience already yeah. that we would rather like to learn from than to, to take over. I understand. You talked a little bit about the markets here that you are aiming for. Do you see any particular issues with market penetration? I know you mentioned the cultural differences and yeah. so on, is that a factor in trying to to sell uh, this tool for, for mental disorders? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, you're right. Just briefly mentioning the stigma, of course, exactly, yeah. surrounding exactly. it. That, uh, for instance, in, in certain cultures, it's embarrassing to say that you have a mental disorder. Mm. Uh, we cannot help. We will help in the marketing campaigns, of course, and, and creating the awareness around it. Mm. But I think the major, major one is uh, that this is a new technology. And that would, of course, make hinders to could I use it, can I trust it, and those kind of things. So we will help uh, to, to mitigate that. We will uh, take help from the distributors. That's why we're taking that approach. So we have a distributor in, in India, for instance. That distributor knows most about the culture and the, the opinion leaders and how to do a marketing campaign and so on for that specific region. And if we look ahead to next year, what milestones do you hope to have achieved by this time, 2021? 
Uh, we hope to have uh, more distribution agreements. Of course, uh, we need to up the sales as well. Uh, so uh, we will have um, achieved uh, India, uh, increasing the sales in India. Uh, we'll have a uh, uh, contract in, in China, Saudi Arabia, Egypt and UAE. That's one distributor. Uh, and then also entering the market in Europe. Because uh, I think it's like a rock star or a pop star or anything. If you don't have your home market, then that will become an issue, of course, for the other markets. Well, thank you so much for coming here and telling us about your product. Thank you. Thank you for having me.